Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. They have solutions for connecting wires to other wires, terminals, or anything else you can think of. There will be a short video explaining more about them at the end. Now enjoy our regular video. Hey, what's happening guys? I have got a classic circuit you definitely need to know if you want to play around with electronics. And that is a charge pump. This is a type of a voltage converter. It works for DC. And it takes a small voltage and it makes it larger by passing it through this particular circuitry you see here. We have an arrangement of diodes and capacitors. In this case, I'm using Schottky diodes to keep the voltage drop low. And my capacitors are, I think they're one microfarad. Yeah, they are, these are one microfarad 50 volt capacitors. Okay. And then over here, this is a 555 timer set up simply as a free running oscillator and a stable multi vibrator. So it is just outputting a signal. In fact, if we bring in the a smelloscope here and connect up the ground, you always want to connect your grounds first. Then I can just come up here, clip on, and I can bring the scope up here so you guys can have a nice view of it. And you can see it is just outputting a 28K square wave. Peak to peak is 5.18 volts. So there's absolutely nothing special going on there. It is providing a PWM signal. And the reason it's providing that PWM signal is so that we have a ground reference here with our capacitors. Let me try and explain this to you a little bit better. Okay, so let's start off with our input voltage, which as you can see is 5 volts. Now, if we grab the multimeter and we just come across our VCC and ground rails, you see we have what is nominally 5 volts. And if we come over here to the output of our 555 timer, we have what, 2.5? Oh, my light went out, sorry. Yeah, we have two and a half volts. It's really five volts coming out there, but because it's switching on and off so fast, it's switching faster than the meter can read it. So five volts, that's all we got. We got five volts coming in here. We've got two and a half volts PWM coming out here at a 50% duty cycle. But when we come over here and read the output of our charge pump, well, look at that. We're more than, more than double our voltage. Well, about double our voltage. So how does it work? Well, it's, it's really not that complicated. The diodes simply prevent current from flowing backwards. And all we are doing is we are charging capacitors individually. We charge one to nine volts. Then we charge the other one to nine volts. Then we put them together. Oh, not nine volts, five volts in this case. Pardon me. We charge one to five volts. We charge the second one to five volts. We put them together. We get 10 volts. Now, there's four of them here. We've only got a two-stage charge converter, and the reason for that is charge pump. The reason for that is, if you'll notice, two of these capacitors are being fed to ground. So, we have a high signal, and we have a low signal coming off our PWM. And as these switch high and low, they put themselves in and out of series in the circuit. So, we simply add everything up. Let's take a look at some of the voltages along the way. And maybe that'll help you to understand it a little bit better. So again, there's our rail voltage, five volts. There is coming out of the 555 timer, two and a half volts. Now at the next one, we're zero volts. But if we come and look on the top side of it up here, we're at nine volts. Then we move over to the next one, we're at 11 volts, well, close enough to it. And then we come over to the last one, and we come out to just about our 13 volts. Whoops. 
I hope that makes sense to you guys because it's a really useful circuit. And like I said, this is only two stage. Everything's done in pairs. You could fill this whole thing up. So what are we what are we gaining per stage? Let's have a look here. So first stage, we're at seven point three. Second stage is nine, so about two volts per stage. Yeah, about two volts per stage is what we're gaining. Now you can change the values of those capacitors. Like I said, I'm using. I think they're one microfarad. Hang on. They're so small. Yeah, one microfarad, 50 volts is what I'm using. Keep in mind, capacitors have a frequency effect at high frequency, so that's why I'm keeping this low at, you know, 30 kilohertz. You, you, you know, you obviously can drive a 555 timer much higher than that, up to around a, a megahertz or more. But then you're going to have to start thinking about frequencies for capacitors. So just keep the frequency low and you won't have any trouble. All right, guys, I hope that made some sense to you. If it does, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to Solder Stick for sponsoring this video. There's going to be a little video at the end showing you some of Solder Stick's excellent products. Check them out. See if they're right for you, and if they are, you can get a discount down below. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Peace. We've all been there, right? We've all spliced a set of wires together and either used some electrical tape or a wire nut or something to connect them together. There's always a better way. If you need them permanently connected, I suggest the solder stick, uh, solder connectors where you heat them up with a heat gun and they melt together. But if you need something a little less permanent, spade connectors. We have a male and a female connector which fit together uh, like so. You crimp those onto the ends of your wires and you, you look like you know what you're doing. And have you ever come across something like this where the wires have been stripped, focus, and just crushed underneath a screw to hold them in place? Well, time and temperature will cause those wires to move and flex and eventually come loose, which can definitely lead to a hazard. In that case, something like the solder stick ring connectors are just what the doctor ordered. Crimp these guys on your wire. They have them for all different size wires. Heat them up. This heat shrink will shrink down, giving you a nice insulated connection to your wire that you can then put underneath that screw and have a nice professional looking solution. Solder stick. You can see their website right there. www.solderstick.com Check them out. See if they have a project or a product that works for you.